prayers of joy and concern. This week we ask you to keep the police keep Connie Hogson, Donna McKay, Peter Rumor, Don McGilvray in, and in your prayers. This week please pray for the ministries of Gilb Street James Pastoral Charge, Ottawa, Ontario and St. John's Lutheran Church. The rest of your announcements are in your bulletin. Good morning. Good morning. I believe, it. okay, there we go. If I put this on, you can hear me more properly. Again, good morning and welcome to Wesley United Church. If you're here for the first time, we are so thankful. We welcome you. We believe that you are in the right place and at the right time. As we begin our service, put your heart and your mind in the house of the Lord. begin by acknowledging that uh, the land on which we gather is the traditional and unceded territory of the Algonquin nation. This week, as we light the Christ candle, again I want to bring your attention to the life and the situation in the, on the Horn of Africa, especially in Somalia, where they are experiencing a very bad drought and a lot of young children are dying because of lack of food, water. May this light of Christ shine into our hearts and our minds so that we can remember those who they don't have food today. Hymn number 516. Come you thou thankful people, come.
take your time to call of worship. From the routines of work and school, home and play, we have come to worship God with the way of the world heavy on our hearts. We have come to worship God during our fears and our hopes. We offer our praise and prayers, O God, for we trust in God's power and presence. So let us worship God with a heart, mind, soul, and strength. Please be seated. Creating God, the mountains you raise to reflect your strength and majesty. Sunrise and sunset frame the day with your light and joy. Fields basting with grain and trees colored with autumn glory sing of your steadfast love. Pictures from the depth of space give a glimpse of your infinity. Yet in Christ you have walked the humble earth. You alone are worthy of our praise. You alone give us hope. Creator, redeemer, and sustainer of life, we praise you and join our voices to those of every precious things to wonder at your mystery and majesty. Together we pray. The prayers are printed in your bulletin. Merciful God, you created human beings with the gifts of intelligence and imagination. Yet we confess we often use these gifts to explore your creation and put others in their places. So often we think that we are great when we are small or we claim something with a set of challenges before us. We convince ourselves that our sins is not nearly as great as others, yet every sin offend your purpose for us. Forgive us, we pray, and grant us a true picture of ourselves. Friends, in Christ, God is gracious. Christ has a promise that those who will humble themselves will be exalted. Having confessed our sins, let us trust the good news of God, the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. May I ask the young one to come and sit at the front? Just sit on the first row, yeah, right there. And I'm going to come for a quick hello. I haven't seen you for many years. I know you. <laughs> well, um, guys, have you ever, I'm speaking with you and I'm speaking with everyone. Because uh, young is not age only. Even my heart, even myself, I'm very young. Depends how you look the number, right? <laughs> so, um, you like gifts? Everyone like gifts, right? Yeah, I know that. Are you expecting to receive something today, uh, this Christmas? This Christmas. Are you expecting to receive some gift? Probably yes. Probably no. Yeah, there we go. It depends how you behave. Am I right? Yeah, and after your mom or your daddy, they read your school report. Then we will talk about what gifts we are looking for. But always you, 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 you like something. You may ask your mom or your dad, oh, I wish you for this Christmas I can have this. Do you normally do that? All right, okay. okay. Well, 
I'll tell you something. I have something for you today. Yeah, Lucy, I can see that big smile. <laughs> well, I have, a, I have a gift here. But I want you guys to look at this gift very carefully. Right? These are two boxes. One. This wonderful, wonderful. Something special. Something special. Something special is right in there. No, don't hold it. You're going to open it and I don't want you to do that. And look at that. <laughs> Lucy, which one should we open first? This one or that one? This one. <laughs> <laughs> wow, so you know what? I'm going to ask someone to come and open it for you. How about that? That okay? No, none of you. I'm going to ask um, Lee, do me a favor, please. Come and open this box and open it carefully. Don't break anything. You break it, you pay. <laughs> open carefully, okay? And then show the kids what is inside. I want everybody to pay attention what is inside. Can you show everyone, Lee, what is inside? There's nothing. <sighs> wow. Thank you. Yeah. Come to me, my dear. Yes. Christine. This doesn't look really pretty. Just, just, just a shopping bag. Right? Can you open it and show us what is inside? Be careful. You break it, you pay. <laughs> Take one thing after one thing at one thing at thing at a time. Ah, what is that, guys? Huh? Can you go go and grab one? Get, Lucy, go and get one. Huh? Yeah, you see? There we go. Get one, Nelson. Nothing? Uh-huh. Everyone get one. There we go. Let me see what is in the box again. Huh? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And something more. Uh-huh. I believe. Uh-huh. Pokemon. Oh, you see? Oh, that is for Lucy, you see? And the cross. Thank you very much. Now you give me this. Thank you. Thank you very much. Did you... Did you notice, guys? Something was very strange about the gift. It is not always... The outside look that matters. It's what is inside. Did you see that? So, when we pray, when you pray, and I know for sure, when you have a meal on the table, your mom or your daddy, they always ask you, say grace. It is not the fancy words that matters. It's the heart. Is the heart. You see the box that was completely empty looked so fancy outside, right? And you thought that maybe inside there was something very beautiful. Was that right? But there was nothing. But the other one, which was just a bag, doesn't look nice. Inside, 
there was a lot of stuff and there was also Christ's cross. Something very precious. So I want you to remember when you pray, always God will listen to your words. But he will pay more attention to your heart. How you pray matters a lot. How you pray. You understand? You stand up and hold my hands. Before you go, you have to listen to your teacher when you go downstairs. If you don't listen, next Sunday there will be no gift. Okay? <laughs> okay. Repeat after me. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus we, thank we thank you for this morning for reminding us, reminding us to, pray to pray with the humble hearts. With the humble hearts. Amen. Amen. Already. The readings. God of all truth. When we think that we have life all figured out, hold up the mirror of your word so that we can see our own foolishness. If we think we are beyond forgiveness, reflect to us your word of mercy and love offered to us through Christ, your living word. Amen. The first scripture reading is from Joel chapter 2, verses 23 to 32. Be glad, O children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given the early rain for your vindication. He has poured down for you abundant rain, the early and the latter rain as before. The threshing floors shall be full of grain, the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. I will restore to you the years that the swarming Lorcos has eaten, the hopper, the destroyer, and the cutter, my great army which I sent among you. 
You shall eat plenty and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God, who has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never again be put to shame. You shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and there is none else. And my people shall never again be put to shame. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy your old men and shall dream dreams. And your young men shall see visions. Even the male and female servants in those days, I will pour out my spirit. And I will show wonders in the heavens and on earth, blood and fire and columns of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there shall be those who escape, as the Lord has said, and among the survivors shall be those whom the Lord calls. The second, the second scripture readings is from Psalms 65. Praise is due to you, O God in Zion, and to you shall vows be performed. O, o you who hear prayer, to you, who, to you shall all flesh come, when iniquities prevail against me, you atone for our transgressions. Blessed is the one you choose and bring near to dwell in your courts. You shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house, the holiness of your temple. By awesome deeds, you answer us with righteousness. O God of our salvation, the hope of all ends of the earth, and the farthest seas, the one who by his strength established the mountains, being girded with might, who stills the roaring of the seas, the roaring of the waves, the atonement of the peoples, so that those who dwell at the ends of the earth are in awe at your signs, you make the going out of the morning and the evening shout for joy. You visit the earth and water it. You greatly enrich it. The river of God is full of water. You provide the grain. For you sow, for so you have prepared it. Your water its furrows abundantly, settling its ridges, softening soft softening it with showers, and blessing its growth. You crown the year with your bounty. Your wagon tracks overflow with abundance. The pastures of the wilderness overflow. The hills grind themselves with joy. The meadows clothe themselves with flocks. The valleys deck themselves with grain. They shout and sing together for joy. The third scripture reading is from 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 6 to 8. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept, and I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me 
the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all to who have loved his appearing. The fourth scripture reading is from 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 16 to 18. At my first defense, no one came to stand by me, but all deserted me. May it not be charged against them. But the Lord stood by me and strengthened me, strengthened me, so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil deed and bring me safely into his heavenly kingdom. To him the glory to him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you. The Holy Gospel according to Luke chapter 18, verse 9 up to 14. Look, according to the book of Luke, chapter 18. And um, I'm reading from verse 9 all the way to 14. He also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and treated others with a contempt. Two men went up into the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee standing by himself praying, thus God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extorters, unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice, twice a week. I give a tithe of all that I get. But the tax collector standing far off will not even lift up his eye to heaven, but beat his, his breast saying, God, the merciful, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to the house unjustified rather than the other, for everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. Dear Lord Jesus, we pray that you will give us a humble heart, humble life, now and forever. Amen. Dear friends, as I spoke to the young one this morning, um, it is true. It is true what is happening in the world is quite interesting. When you look into that picture, what do you see? You see a tree, right? That is a tree. It might be a tree and that must be winter around January or February, very cold. Or you may see two people they are about to kiss. Hmm. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Majority of you here are either retired teacher or teachers already. Uh, you're teaching right now. Who can tell me what is optical illusion? Who is going to tell us what is optical illusion? And today I need your help. I need someone to preach on my behalf. You know, that's how we do business here. Who want to tell us what is optical illusion? 
Jay, Jay Hino, Jay Hino, okay. They told us, they, somebody told me that you know what is optical illusion. I have no idea, I taught at the college <laughs> level. <laughs> an optical illusion is where you uh, don't see what you think you see. Uh, it's an illusion and uh, it takes sometimes a closer observation in order to really see what is being looked at. So see what you're looking at. Okay. Anyone with a different idea? Optical illusion? Okay. I believe that is the answer, right? An optical illusion is something that appears to be different than it actually is. Right? So you may have a stationary lines appear to be moving. Line of equal length appear to be unequal. And sometimes flat appears to have depth. And if you are driving, listen to me carefully, if you are driving and you see two bridges, stop your car, get out of your car and walk home because the possibility you're going to drive into the wrong bridge. If you listen to news report after someone is arrested for something serious offense or some serious offense, the neighbors of the person are often shocked. What do the neighbors always say? Optical illusion. What does the neighbor always will say? You have your neighbor, right? The neighbor seems to be a nice person. That neighbor is a very good person. Very good person, people. It's a lady or it's a man. It doesn't matter. But all of a sudden, there was a three police cars next to the house. And you get the news of a very serious offense or crime committed. What do neighbors always say? The neighbor, they have very good friends. Do you know what the neighbor, they always say? He was such a nice guy. Oh, she was a good neighbor. Things were not what they seem. That's how it is. I'm not saying, but just in case I do something stupid. There will be two comments. One, we were waiting for that to happen. <laughs> we saw this coming. We knew this was going to happen. <laughs> or, oh, some will say, oh my good Lord, how did that happen? We don't believe this. This is not him. This is not her. This morning, Jesus tells the story that in many ways is an optical illusion. Two people went into the temple to pray. One is the tax collector, one is the Pharisees. I don't have time to give you a, a church history lesson, but the tax collector were the most hated people in those days all the way to 2022. Pharisees are people who walk with the long robes. They carry the Bible. They preach the gospel. They talk nice about themselves and their religious institution. So the Pharisee, he went into the temple. And to, don't take me wrong. He, according to the scripture we just read, he was absolutely a good man. He was a very good man. He gave money to the church. He gave even more than what he, other people. He read the scripture. He read the scripture very well. He fasted according to the scripture. Not only once, he fasted twice a week. He, 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 he did all the church rituals. Everything he was up to the par. Excellence. The other guy, as I said, 
he sat down there. He could even lift up his head to look to the sky. And he said, God, I cannot even lift up my eyes and look at you. I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Um, quick. Sometime the setting in the temple court, the Pharisees came in, as I said, and they did their rituals, they finished up everything. Um, this man, I'm going to focus on only, only one man. There was two men here. I'm going to focus on this one man. There are many people who believe they will be received by God because they are good people. We think we will be received by God because we are good people. We recite how we recite how we help others. We recite how we help the community, the church membership, the position they we hold. We take great satisfaction in money we have donated and the awards they have been given to us. We go to God with our resume and believe God will certainly want someone like us in his kingdom. We do that. The other day, I was telling my boys, being a pastor is not the key to internal, to enter the kingdom of God. It's not. I'm not a special. I'm not unique. Such people like, like Pharisees wanted to be seen, not changed. Listen to me, my friends, brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. We go to church to be changed, not to be seen by other people. We come to church to be changed. We come here, and I remember Ben, Ben Wakabi, he, when he used to come to church, every Sunday I would stand out there and wait, and he will come and I'll say, Ben, Nice to see you all. I'm gonna, am I going to see you next Sunday? And he looked at me and said, I have to be here. Next Sunday, I will be here. So I asked him like three times. Last time, he looked at me and he says, Pastor, if I'm not here, I don't know where else I'm going to be because I am a very bad person. Boy, I was happy. Notice that the man compared himself to others. This is what they have to do to feel good about you. This is something that we have to do to feel good about ourselves. We compare ourselves with others. It is simple, very simple. There is nothing simple like to blame the other person. It's the best, it's the easy thing. Even in the house. It's not me. Who did it? Maybe Nixon. Very easy. It is simple. Find someone who is having more trouble or appear to be worse than you and compare yourself to that person. You will feel righteous and holy by comparison. Notice to whom the Pharisees compare himself. He is not like. I'm going to be serious here now. A while ago, someone asked me, you're Lutheran? Then I said, yes. Where did you go for training? Then I say Tanzania, and then Saskatoon, the theological training. Then I say, yes. 
Then I say, and then somewhere there I changed. I went back to conflict studies and other studies. Why are you saving the United Church? And this is ordained minister, just like me. Then I look at him and I say, what do you mean? He said, I, I mean you're Lutheran. I am a Lutheran. Why are you saving them? I smiled. And um, I said, uh, Reverend, yes, we will talk next time. And I left. In heaven, Dear friends, in heaven, God he is not looking at our religious institution. In heaven, there is no religion. In heaven, there is me and you, Christine. There is me and you, Jay. There's nothing else. And in heaven, to get there, yes, we have to be good here. Yes, we have to do good things here. We have to help the neighbor. We have to feed the hungry. We have to clothe the naked. We have to visit those who are in prison. We have to go to the hospital. We have to pick up the phone and call people. We have to be good here. But to get to heaven is God. It's God. It is not what you do. Why? Because even by comparison, let me give you one thing or two things from the Bible. The Bible says, it is written, thou you shall not steal. And then Jesus says, but if you look and you wish you can have this candle into your home you have already stolen. You are a thief. That's what the Bible says. And then the Bible says, thou you shall not commit adultery. But if you look, those beautiful girls, those beautiful handsome boys out there, and your mind just by looking, you have already committed all that. Then, who can enter the kingdom of God? And then Jesus gave another good example. And then he says, two people, uh, one man was going down from, Jordan, from Jericho to Jerusalem. And he fell into the hands of the bandits, bad people. They beat him, they left him almost uh, half dead. Now listen, I'm going straight to the good Samaritan. The good Samaritan came, he looked at him, he picked him up, put him on his horse, took him to hospital, say to the hospital care, take good care of this man and send me the bill. Is there any good Samaritan here? Can we good, be good Samaritan? Because someone was trying to say, what can I do to enter the kingdom of God? What can I do to enter the kingdom of heaven? There is absolutely nothing you can do to qualify to enter into God's kingdom. You enter there because God himself, he wants you there. End of story. This is what you have to do to feel good about your own life. It is simple. Find someone who is having more trouble or appear to be worse than you and compare yourself to that person. Friends, let me conclude this by telling you something here. Hear the good news. God does not expect us to be perfect before we come to him. 
He knows we are flawed people and he is willing to take us as we are and begin the process of leading us in the direction of healing and new life. You don't have to be better before you come to him. You simply need to want to change and be willing to trust him for salvation and new life. Feed the hungry. And then say, God, I'm a sinner. It's only by your grace. What does it take to be justified or made right with God? Let us be as clear as possible. We must acknowledge that we do not deserve anything from God. We must see that we are heading in the wrong direction. And then when you know that you are going into the wrong direction, if you are a woman, you stop and you ask direction. If you are a man, you keep on driving. We must confess. We must ask Jesus, Jesus, I am lost. I need direction. We must confess our sinful attitude before God with true sorrow. In other words, we must apologize for punishing him away for so long. Friends, brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, do you know a tax collector in your life? Do you know someone who feels so undeserving that they feel they are not far gone to be loved by God? Yes, we do. Yes, we know. You know someone who thinks that they are not worthy. Tell them. Give them the gift that is better than any gift they could ever expect. And then stand back and watch carefully because you may see a life transformed before your very eyes. Give them the gift. That's the way we should approach others with the gospel. The message of Christ is not a club with which to beat people. It is an incredible gift that it can delight and change people. The people who feel they deserve it, the least are the one who embrace it most joyfully. It will be a transformation that is no illusion. It is not a trick. It is God's grace. It is a real and it is amazing. We don't need to judge anyone. God, he's standing open, his arms wide open, waiting for everyone to come. This is our time. The message for us who are here in this morning is to go and to invite those who think that they are not worthy. The house of the Lord is for everyone. Everyone is invited. Go and invite them. Go and tell them the good news. Go and tell them that they are worthy. Go and tell them the gift is at the table and everyone is invited. Number 232. Two, three, two. Joyful. 
Please, you may be seated as the offering is received. Sometimes we think what we have to offer doesn't matter. Somebody else has more to share. But God knows the value of a few loaves and fish shared. The Lord's coin claimed. One tiny seed planted from which a tree grows. Trust God with what you have to offer and see what God can do. God and a generous God receive our humble gifts offered in the hope and the gratitude. Make something of them and of us so that the world will be surprised by your love and what we can offer them in Jesus' name. Amen. Shall we humble ourselves before God and pray? Just a merciful God, we lift our eyes to you in hope and gratitude. When the world around us seems troubling, we are grateful for your steadfast love. Thank you for your spirit at work in all times and places, calling out the best in your people. Show we us when we must repent, open paths to reconciliation where we have offended. With the humility of the tax collector in Jesus' story, may we seek your justice and know your mercy. We pray for justice for the earth, Protect those creatures and inhabitants that are that our way of life is threatening. Protect those communities and islands, nations at risk from climate change. Open our eyes to see how we can live more responsibly and change our hearts to know we must. We pray for justice among the nation, especially Ukraine and Russia, South Sudan, Somalia, Ethiopia, Yemen, Afghanistan. Create more generous sharing of resources between countries with a good harvest and those depleted by famine. Where resources are extracted for export, protect brave advocate for fair wages and environmental protection, and where there is aggression and intimidation between nations, raise up the willingness to make peace and settle differences fairly. We pray for justice in our court system. Guide those who judge and defend to serve with integrity that those who are accused may receive fair trials and that those who have been wronged or harmed are restored to fullness of life. Grant those who are convicted human treatment so that your spirit may lead them to rehabilitated potential. We pray for justice in the workplace. May those who work for others be treated with dignity and earn a fair wage. May all who created that work earn a fair return, create equity and respect between those of different backgrounds and identities. Guide young people to opportunities to develop their gifts.
God, we all need some kinds of healing in our lives. We remember before you those struggling with illness of a body, mind, or spirit. Those waiting for diagnosis or treatment. And all those healing challenges are inevitable, invisible to others. God, we all, your spirit may pray within us, O oh God, even when we cannot find the right words. So hear us this day and answer us in a way that encourage our faith and change the world for the good. For the sake of Jesus Christ, who taught us this prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from the evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Number 41, O oh, beautiful Gaia.
in humble confidence, trusting in God's love for you, yet sure you have still you still have to learn and to give. And may grace, mercy, and peace from God who creates, redeems, and saves us be with you this day and every day, now and always. Amen.